This week, Steve and Joe will take a road trip down south to pick up a bunch of donations for our project and the sail cargo trip. But first, there's still a few things to take care of in the boathouse before they leave. I'm going to back the truck up here, take out all the 2x4s and 2x6s that we got from Randy for palleting up the stuff to get on to sail cargo. There's a bronze strap that I need to let in on the frame, and Alex should be back from Kira's, I would imagine, any time now. Um, and then we can get to work on hanging those planks. I also got these yesterday when I went and looked at those old machines. It's just got a couple uh, cast iron crucibles that are pretty cool. But even more useful than that, we've got a few cast iron ladles. So a bit down the road, we're going to have to do some bronze casting, and some of that's going to be for some pretty small pieces. So these ladles and these crucibles, they might come in handy. And if not, I don't know. I'm sure we'll find a use or find someone who can use them. Um, but he was looking to get rid of them, and the price was right, they were free, so why the hell not? We'll add them to the cash. So I'm going to let this strap in and we've been letting the straps in as we get to them. And the reason for that is that these bent frames, they have some give and play to them. So as we wrap the planks around the boat, we're kind of shoving them fore and aft a little bit to line them up. We're moving them uh, port to starboard a little bit. I mean, not by much at all, but it's enough that it would cause these bronze straps not to line up by the time we got closer to the shear. And the bronze is pretty soft and flexible because uh, it's really thin, but it's like two and a half to three inches wide depending on where the strap is, which strap it is. So trying to bend the straps edgewise is really, really hard, which is exactly the feature that we want from them. But that makes adjusting them in the notches close to impossible. So if we were to go through and cut all the notches on the frame and the bronze strap were to move a little bit as we put the planks on it and it settles in, or we were to shove the frames fore and aft a little bit or port to starboard just a little bit, they wouldn't line up and we would end up having these big mortises where they go um, and big kind of spots off to the side where we would have to enlarge them. So instead what we've been doing is waiting until we're close and this isn't really going to move, this is going to be solid here. So we'll, I'll run up to the shear, I'll unclamp it, this whole strap will just gently flop out of the way. We'll be really careful not to kink it. And then I can route this out and we can paint it, we can put the bedding compound, we can put the strap back up and we'll put the plank on. Well, that's Alex. Sounds like him and Kira need to go switch out a car and then they'll be over soon. So like Kira's gonna work on some of our fall cleanup and do some of our leaf work for us today. Score. Okay. We've got a little jig, and the jig is fairly small, so we have to move it around a couple times um, to be able to do the whole frame. But the nice thing about having it small is that it fits better on a flat spot on the frame, and it doesn't hit things around it. Um, so, so far it works pretty well. It doesn't take much time at all. So Kira hopped on the leaf blower while Steve and I got the next plank ready. This is the same one that broke on us last week. First, we'll cut out the new section of plank. Fortunately, we were able to use the old piece that broke to lay out the shape. As we mentioned last week, we're going to try steaming these into place as well. We won't get them fastened before Steve's trip, 
but they'll have a long while to adjust before we have to crank down on them to get them installed. Now I just gotta mark that corner squared down and that should give us that upper outer corner to cut to, right? Yeah. With the plank roughly in place, we still need to work out how we are going to get the steaming to work. We'll just figure out what height to set the stove up. Yeah. And then I figure that'll get stuck in there. This will all become more pliable. And we'll just have to kind of cinch it up. A while back we were talking to Thad about bending the planks in the stern of the boat and we asked him if he thought we were going to have to steam them or not. And he said something along the lines of, I'm not sure but you'll figure it out. And boy oh boy did we figure it out. Uh, so the last time we tried to bend the plank on the boat here, it split a bit on us. So this is the solution. Uh, we re-scarfed on the end of the plank and got that cut out. Our scarf joint is forward a bit of where we're steaming. And what we have is a vacuum seal bag here that you would use for food. And our uh, trusty old Coleman stove, we're going to put the water on there and pump the steam into the bag. And then the other end we have hooked up to a thin piece of PVC pipe that exhausts out the back of the boathouse. Because we want to try not to steam out the boathouse and turn this place into a big swamp if we can help it. So we're going to go grab the pot, throw that on there, let this boil and steam for about an hour or so, and then we'll start putting clamps on it and putting that twist into it. And once we get it clamped up into the stern, we'll do that with the bag in place. Uh, we'll let everything cool, and we'll slide the bag off and get set up and do the same thing on the other side. I don't know how many planks we're going to have to do this to. We'll see how it goes. But right now, the twist, it, it does a very severe twist in a really short distance. Um, so I think steaming them is going to save us a lot of work and a lot of heartache. Uh, so yeah, let's get fired up and get to it. So our first try wasn't really producing much of a result. So we decided to ditch the old Coleman and get something that would put out more heat. We kept experimenting with the design for a while, and pretty soon we had something that seemed like it might do the job. After a couple upgrades, we finally got the steamer running really well here. So we got a turkey fire set up with a big old pot, and Alex picked up this uh, aluminum venting, and that's working really well. And we got that into the bag, and then we took one of our dust collector hoses and set that up as the exhaust out of the boathouse. And so far it seems to be working pretty well. The plank is definitely feeling more pliable. Um, so I think we're at the point where we can start putting some plant clamps on it and cinching it down and seeing how much longer we have to steam it. I guess we must have just pushed on it a little bit, huh? <laughs> Probably. No, I'm just gonna make sure that we've got room for the steam to keep traveling. And by the end of the day, we had steamed the planks on both sides, and it was really doing wonders to get them to go into the super twisty part of the stern. Yeah.
All right, it's kind of cold here today. I uh, just dropped off Steve and Joe at the airport. Um, they're on their way down to North Carolina to do a trip all the way up the East Coast, picking things up that have been donating to us for uh, so the cell cargo trip that we're doing. Uh, so while they're gone, I'm going to work on taking this kind of apart, get the bags off, let those ends dry a little bit. Um, then once it's dry, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on them. We'll let them sit here for a little bit, kind of get used to their shape. And then uh, maybe later this week while I'm doing runs around here, I'll uh, get these guys situated a little bit better so that we can uh, finish putting these on the boat once uh, they get back. Starting to get some beautiful shape in there. So this is the port side. And this is the starboard side. All right, folks, let the adventure begin. So Joe and I flew down to Raleigh, North Carolina this morning. We rented this massive 26 foot Penske truck and now we are headed two hours north um, to go pick up the first load. So it's gonna be a couple days of Joe and I driving up the coast and collecting machinery and hopefully having a smooth ride. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start on the next leg of the journey and we'll touch base with you all in a little later. You ready, Joe? As soon as we get something to eat. As soon as we get something to eat, yeah. Joe's hungry. We gotta feed the beast. Sweet at our first destination. So uh, I guess let's shut the truck off and just see what we got. Yeah, we brought a really big truck. Yeah, I see that. You think everything will fit? I don't know. I don't know if we've got any lights in here. I was worried about you having enough room. Oh, I yeah. a big enough truck. I think we got to cover it. lights in here. If you know how to turn on. The first stop was to visit Brandon, who had a ton of stuff for sale cargo but also had a CNC machine that we were really interested in. He'd recently bought a boat and was planning a big trip of his own. So he started the process of clearing out his entire shop. So now I'm packing everything up and getting it to, <laughs> I'm narrowing it down, everything I can take on the boat with me. Yeah, we're gonna be playing that game in a couple of years. Yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> it's hard. Well, on the boat? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make my way to Australia. And then from there, island hop to Japan following the Marines of World War II. Oh, cool. And just That'll like be a neat trip. Document and explore and just look at all the history before it's completely gone. Yeah. I put the entire CNC in this case right here. Oh, cool. I, th I, was, I thought you guys would be like seriously strapped for space. Oh, it weighs a ton. So... Oh, gorgeous. Great. You got destructions in there? Uh, everything's online. The This machine, all the software yep. and everything is open source on their website. You just download Perfect. it right, right there. Beautiful. So this is yeah. the, the jackpot right here. All the end mills. Okay. All right. Dial indicators, micrometers. Yeah, this is going to open up a whole new world. I did this with it. So where is that? That's Nantucket. Nantucket, okay. And then the I thought it looked familiar. Islands, and then I used the USGS map. Okay. And I just to do the shelves? Copied the, the contours. contours. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Oh, these are... Uh, Thank you. Yeah, real good. We'll have to go stop here real quick and go get some ratchet straps on the way out. Is there like a Home Depot or Lowe's or Rockies or Ace or yeah, any of that a, kind of thing not too far away? There's a Lowe's. I actually, I was, I got rest straps you can have. We flew down with some tools, but I didn't feel like trying to fly with ratchet straps. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. If you're not going to use them, that'd be amazing. No, I'm not. I was thinking about it, but then I saw they already had rust on them. I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna a boat. No, like, that's just going to get real bad real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll tighten something up and you won't be able to get it loose. Exactly. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, I'll tie knots. I'll figure this out. All right. So, ropes. All righty. So, we got our first load. Brandon was an incredibly nice and generous guy. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. how much stuff he gave us in Cell Cargo. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He's got a nice dog. Yeah, he's got a nice dog. 
So next up is Richmond, Virginia. And according to the GPS, we should get there at about 12.38 a.m. But 8.20 now. 8.20 now. But that should put us there, avoiding any traffic and driving at night. We'll get a hotel, sleep for a few hours, and then we got a rendezvous tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. to get the ENCO. So I guess uh, let's turn you off and hit the dusty trail. Well, that was a long day. <laughs> so Joe and I have been up for oh, about 20 hours now. It's two o'clock in the morning. Uh, we just made it to Richmond, Virginia. As you can see, he's trying to figure out the blinds. <laughs> Gonna get a few hours sleep and then uh, we gotta go meet the next guy at 10 a.m. tomorrow to go load up the Enco mill. Um, so, should get like six, seven hours of sleep and then uh, back on the road tomorrow. Good morning! So we got into Richmond here about 2 a.m. last night. Yeah. Slept for about six hours, grabbed some breakfast here at the hotel. We gotta run to Home Depot, which is about a mile and a half away, grab a few supplies, and then we can run over and get the Enco Mill, and then hopefully head on up to Delaware. Yeah, 28 degrees in winter. Yeah, it ain't warm, but no. it's warmer than it is back home, and yeah, the trees here have leaves on them, which is different. We don't have that back home. Definitely yeah. farther south. <laughs> While Steve and Joe got set up to load the Enco mill, I was getting the day started back at home. We've got a lot to do today. I gotta go pick up a trailer so that we can go get some tools later, but this guy's been a little neglected lately, so I think I'm gonna take him for a quick walk in the woods, and then uh, I'll oil that plank that we just have, all well, the two planks on the boat, and uh, go get that trailer. We can see about getting some stuff. What do you think, huh? All right, let's do it. As Joe and Steve headed towards their final stop, I was wrapping up a long day on my own in the boathouse. It's been a cold day today. I uh, fit this plank by myself for the day, um, which by the way is much slower than with two people. <laughs> um, everything is looking pretty good, pretty tight. I think I've got a little bit more to figure out up here, but I think that's pretty good. And the stern looks fantastic. Um, so I am cold and I'm tired and I have a headache, so I am going to run inside and take a shower and make some dinner. And it sounds like Steve and Joe are making some incredible headway, so we'll see them pretty soon. There was a bit of work to do on this metal lathe before it could be ready to ride in the truck, and eventually they were back on the road and headed for home. They got in super early in the morning, so while Steve rested, Kira and I took the trailer that I had picked up the day before to make a local run for some more donations. 
Do you want these Keep in the back safe. of the truck? Don't uh, put these in before the, you close yeah, the Yeah, we probably should. Can I hand it up to me? Got it. Unforgiving, that thing. If you dropped it on your foot, you'd likely have a confusion. Yeah, it's got the little 10 gauge or 12 gauge little slugs for it. Cool. Yeah, I'll put that in the truck. Thank you. Most people see you as a guy who can come and get rid of all their stuff. <laughs> My gosh, it makes me feel good. Especially since I don't have to call the chunk man. Damn. <laughs> now comes the fun part. Gotta unload this. <laughs> After I had the trailer unloaded, I went out for one more stop to pick up yet another lathe. And thankfully, I managed to get this on the trailer by myself without any issues. Next week, we will have a few friends over to help create up the massive haul that we have going down the sail cargo. And then, our editor Ben will come down with his camera to give you a different view as we continue with the planking. Thank you all for watching. And uh, we wanted to take this time to thank everybody who has supported the project, be it via Patreon, donations, or even simply just buying merchandise and sharing the project. It really makes a huge difference. Um, this is such a great way for us to be able to create the videos and share this with people all around the world. And it has really just been amazing to see the community that has come around us. So uh, as promised in the last video, um, we are rounding out our merchandise um, for what people asked for. So we have these. Uh, mugs, we have, um, they're great insulated mugs, they work really great. Steve has just been using them the last week while he's going out hunting and they almost keep things too hot. So we've got these black ones and we've got the silver ones with black lettering. And finally, we've got these little pins that would be really great stocking stuffers. Um, and at some point we're going to try to get some beanies or winter hats um, put together, um, but that will be coming at a later date. Um, and for everybody that wants these in time for the holidays in the continental US, sorry for everybody overseas, we're just not going to make it in time for that. Um, you must purchase them by December 19th, and that gives us time to pack them and ship them out, and Christy will get all those done just in time. Um, so again, thank you so much. We are so happy to have such a wonderful community around us and we are excited to share this with you all throughout the New Year's.